This is the last passage for the 2021 May International Exam. I'm going to do it. I've never seen it before, so let's see how it goes. I'm going to use the no reading strategy, and I'm not going to check my answers until the end. So make sure you watch all the way to the end to see if I got anything wrong. I doubt I will, but let's see. Um, this passage is adapted from this guy, Inheritors of the Earth, How Nature is Thriving in an Age of Extinction. Okay, so probably about extinction. Let's just go right to the questions. 42, it can reasonably be inferred from the passage that the experiment was ultimately prompted by. Now, this could be a whole passage question. I don't have a line reference. Oh, but I do have a bunch of line references here. So it's an evidence pair. This is why you always turn the page because they like to spread these evidence questions over two pages. They do it just to mess with you. So we want to know what prompted the experiment. That's the one word in that question that I'm going to focus on the most. What prompted it? What started it? So let's go to these lines. Um, 21 to 24 is here, 21 to 24. No one would really have expected this to be the case, and these researchers were no exceptions. Okay. Actually, becoming the different after a short period of time. Um, I don't know. Maybe that something's unexpected. I don't, this doesn't really say much. So maybe some people, there's some, something unexpected. I don't know. This doesn't really say much. Let's go to 27 to 35, see if that gives us anything better. Um, 27 to 35, oof, long line reference. Uh, in fact, they were not thinking about it at all. The main goal of their experiment was to obtain pure seeds of each population and species to use in the rest of the research. However, just to amuse himself, what is, what's his name, who is now with the owner of whatever, in his own words, playfully decided to transfer palm from Spanish to California plants just to see what happened. So it sounds like whatever prompted the experiment was just like, they just wanted to do something, right? They playfully decided. So this this feels like the answer. I don't even know what the experiment is at this point, but it sounds like they're giving me a reason that someone did something. So why were they prompted to do something? Because of something with seeds and pollen and whatever. So I, I think this is probably the answer, but let's double check. 36 to 40, 36 to 40. 36 to 40. The results were very surprising. Californian sulfur star thistles produced 44% fewer seeds per flower when they were fertilized using Spanish pollen than when they were supplied with California pollen. So that's the result of an experiment. It is not what prompts an experiment, so that's not right. Um, see? And 43 to 50. 43 to 50. Isolation in the yellow star thistle is even greater at around 52% reduction in fertility. However, this is over a large number of generations. Uh, the yellow star thistle was first found there. Okay, this is just yeah. This is just this is just like background. This is not important. Um, so I think what prompted it is that someone just decided to take a chance on something. That's what line reference B was saying. But I don't know. Maybe it's more something about line reference A that I didn't quite understand. So now we have to go to 42 again and see if there's a good match. So what prompted it? Com professional competitiveness along with a particular fascination with star thistles. Are they competitive? I, I don't know. That's a weird word. That the scientists are competing with each other? I don't know. Personal curiosity about star thistles in addition to a clear scientific objective. Well, yeah, personal curiosity. It did say in line reference B that this guy just did what he did because he was being playful. So he's just curious just to amuse himself. So that maybe is curiosity. Now, there was a real experiment, right? There was a main goal. I don't know. That seems right, but let's see. Um, oh, I'm in the wrong question. A desire to corroborate an earlier study on star thistles? No. There's nothing about an earlier study, I don't think. An interest in studying other plants related to star th thistles rather than an interest in star... Uh, it's, I don't, it's not about the plant. Um, yeah, I think it's B. I don't think they're being competitive, right? That almost has a negative um, connotation. Um, yeah, just to see what happened. There, this is just this is curiosity. This is a great example of like they're using a word by using different words, right? They're use, they're maintaining an idea, the idea of curiosity, that just to see what happens. That's what curiosity is, like by definition. So th this is definitely the answer. Um, so that is line reference B, matching with choice B, personal curiosity. All right. Which choice best supports the conclusion that attitudes toward non-native star thistle may overlook the plant's positive effects on the environment? Oi, okay. So, 
non-native positive effects. This seems to be a negative positive kind of thing, right? So there's some sort of attitude towards the non-native that sounds bad, right? Maybe we don't like them, but it's got some positive effect. Um, I really don't know. This is a very weird question. Now, looking at the chronology rule, we've got some issues here. Like, I would expect it to be after 27 to 35, which would probably mean C or D. But then if we look at the next question, that's line 26. So does the chronology follow 43, or does the chronology come set up 45? I don't know. It could be either way. we got to read everything. Uh, this, this test as a whole has a lot of chronology issues. It's just very strange. Um, 1 through 6. Let's look at that. What are we doing again? The positive, negative, non-native? Okay. One through six. California enjoys a Mediterranean-style climate with cool and relatively moist winters. Okay, not surprisingly that the European this and its relative established wild populations there. So this has nothing to do with anyone's attitudes about anything. It's just talking about where the plant lives. So that's wrong. Six to 11. Uh, six to 11. The yellow star thistle uh, in particular has become so successful that it regarded as a noxious weed. That sounds bad right? Noxious weed. Despite the fact that its spiky golden yellow flowers supply nectar to butterflies and bees, and it mainly grows on, on disturbed ground where native wildflowers are rare. So this seems to be this positive and negative, right? It's negative, it's a weed, but it's positive. It um, supplies nectar, and it fills in these other spots where there's no flowers. So this, this just by dumb summary, this seems right. This just seems like the right connotation. Uh, let's look at 51 to 53, though. Um, 51 to 53, 51 to 53. The California and Spanish star thistles seem to be losing the ability to mate with each one. Okay, so no, that's just a random fact about the, the thistles. 59 to 65. Um, knowing this, Montesinos and his colleagues decided to find out what the fertility might be when you cross different th thistles. They tried to fertilize. Um, okay, yeah, no, this is not about, it's definitely B, right? It has the right connotations, it's talking about people's attitudes, right, what they think. It's regarded as a noxious weed. So it's got a lot of the key words, and that is a good sign that it's right. So my chronology rule thing here, again, isn't really working because they're, they're jumping between different types of questions. I think, in, in this is from experience, in my mind, what's happening here is they are treating, even though this is an evidence pair, 42 and 43, in the mind of the SAT, that is a whole passage question. So it doesn't break the chronology because it's about the whole passage. Therefore, they see it as like, oh, it's just setting up everything else. And then this question here, 44, is where the actual chronology rule kind of starts, where we're like, okay, now we're going to go through an order. This is the kind of thing that if you're just taking your SAT as a high school student, you're, you're not paying attention to. But as someone who does this as their job, this idea of how the SAT is kind of ordering these questions, they set it up with one or two that they consider to be about the whole passage, then they get into the ones that are more specific about specific lines. And so here, it looks like they're breaking the chronology rule, but in my mind, this is very typical. So it's frustrating for you, but I, I get what's going on. Um, let's look at 45, uh, 26. Okay, what's going on in 26? And placing the word knowledge in quotation marks, the author most likely suggests. Okay, 26, knowledge. All right, oh, this is a long sentence. Okay, could they actually have become that different after such a short period of time? No one would really have expected this to be the case. Um, they have been brought up on the knowledge that it takes a very long time for new species to form. In fact, they were not thinking about it at all. The main goal of their experiment was to do this. So, they're saying that it might not be knowledge. That's why we usually put things in quotes, is to say maybe it's like fake. So it's not really knowledge, maybe. It's, it's something that they, I think, are going to disprove in some way. So it's fake knowledge or untrue. Uh, so just the scientific concepts are often more specialized than our concepts in other... No, it's not about other disciplines. What con constitutes valid evidence varies widely. Ooh, that's a very strong word. Across scientific fields. Well, it's not multiple fields. Widely is a word that would bother me just on its own from any uh, SAT reading question. So a word that's usually wrong. Scientific theories are easily misunderstood by non-scientists. Not about non-scientists. It's not n nothing is easy here. An idea assumed by scientists to be true may not be applicable in some context. It's definitely this, right? Is it real knowledge or is it something we just assume? Is it an assumption? And in, in scientific terms, something that isn't proven is an assumption, and therefore we shouldn't call it knowledge. But that's that's definitely it. Um, all right. 48, indirect. Let's see. 48. 
Um, indirect. Okay. The yellow star thistle was first found growing in California in 1824, but its journey was an indirect one via Chile. So the chances are the last Spanish and California yellow star thistles last interbred. Okay. So it was its journey was an indirect one. It was um, I don't know, not direct. It was uh, windy, a windy path, right? It's going to Chile first. So was multiple stops, right? So like think about a plane maybe. Um, misleading roundabout. Yeah, wow. I don't wonder I couldn't think of a good word. Roundabout. Basically, right, if it's roundabout, it's going lots of different ways. So it's going to Chile first, then to California. So it's not going in one path, right? So it fits, but no wonder I was trying, to, I was struggling to come up with a word. Roundabout is a weird one. Um, cool. All right, 50 to 51. The sentence in line 50 to 51 mainly serves to, okay. Well, let's go to that line reference, 50 to 51. Uh, we kind of already read this, so let's see. Let's get around there. So they said it's indirect. We just read that. Nonetheless, this is still exceptionally fast. The California and Spanish star thistles seem to be losing the ability to mate with one another. They are on the path towards becoming separate species. So exceptionally fast. So what's the point of this? Is it's to say that this is an unusual kind of thing. Um, unusual. Summarize the data provided in the paragraph. Is there really data in the paragraph? Interpret the findings of the experiment described in the paragraph. Contextualize information presented in the preceding sentence. Illustrate the idea developed in the preceding sentence. Wow, these are so vague. Um, okay. Well, let's maybe get the rest of the paragraph and look at that sentence again. This is a long paragraph. Ugh. Okay. The results were very surprising. California, da da da, 40% of the sewer seeds. So the surprising results. There's supply with California pollen. Over the period since the plants were introduced to California, the compatibility. Uh, has declined, isolation is even greater, um, reduction in fertility. However, this is over a larger number of generations. The yellow star thistle was first found growing in 1824. Its journey was in the indirect one via Chile. Um, they last interbred a long time ago. This is exceptionally fast for them to have become different species. The California star thistles seem to be losing the ability to mate with one another. They're on the path towards becoming separate species. Okay, it summarizes the data. I guess it does. Interpret the findings of the experiment. It's not an experiment. Not an experiment, right? There's no experiment. They're just saying this is the data, I guess. Um, yeah, they're, they've got data. They're talking about the results of the experiment. This paragraph itself does not contain an experiment. It's results. So yeah. I think, I think this feels, this feels risky. Contextualize information presented in the preceding sentence. Well, the information in the preceding sentence was about when they were breeding and how it journeyed. So maybe it's contextualizing it by saying it's fast? But no, it's, it, it's not. Con contextualized means to put something in a bigger kind of context, right? Summarize means to take something big and make it small. So we're not taking... Look at this sentence. It's so... It's just one... It's like five words. So it's not contextualizing and making it bigger, it's summarizing and making it smaller. Whew, this is tough, this is a good question. Um, so I think that's wrong. Pers illustrate the idea, well no, it's not illustrating it, if anything it's summarizing it. It's, it's the idea is that the, the thing was going all over the place, it's not showing us that, illustrating it, it's, it's, I think it's A, it might be B. Interpret the findings, summarize the data. Oh, what does the data say? <laughs> this is a hard one. This is a tough, this is a good question. Um, they produce fewer seeds. The results were surprising. Compass isolation is even greater. Okay. Nonetheless, this is a still exceptionally fast. All right. This is talking about speed. Do they talk about speed anywhere here? Compatibility. This, this generations thing is bothering me. I don't like this, this is split right here. This is over a larger number of generations. What are they talking about? The yellow star thistle was first found growing in California. Its journey was an indirect one. So the chances that they made it just 350 generations ago. Um, exceptionally fast. Losing the ability to mate with one another. 
I gotta pick something. Clock is ticking. Um, I'm gonna stick with A. This is absolutely a question I would come back to after I do more. Yeah, this is a tricky one. I hate that there's nothing really to latch on to, right? We have to latch on to words that are very bland in themselves. Words like summarize and interpret and contextualize. I'm pretty sure it's not C or D. Does the paragraph describe an experiment? The findings, and it's. I think it's A. I think it's summarizing the data. Interpret the findings. It could be that it's an interpretation, but is an interpretation a summary? Kind of. I just think that there isn't an experiment described in the paragraph, right? It's it's saying data, but the experiment has already taken place, I guess. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna trust that. Hmm. I don't know though. That could be one. That could be one I get wrong. We'll revisit that when I go over the answers at the end. According to the passage, what is the relationship between the Spanish and Californian populations of yellow star thistles? Well, we've been saying that they're different, right? That they, they are related, but now they're spreading apart. Let's see if we just get this from memory. They are now recognized as different but closely related species. They are currently of the same species but appear to be diverging. The Californian population is a hybrid offspring of the Spanish yellow star thistles and is native to California. The Spanish population has low fertility rates compared to the Californian population. I don't think they're comparing them. I don't think this is right. Um, I think it's B, but let's see, because I think the whole point of this is that they're becoming different species. Um, um, uh, because closely related species, the, uh, see, they are on the path towards becoming separate species, right? It just says it. It just says it. They are now recognized. No. They are currently of the same species, but appear to be diverging. Hybrid offspring, no, it's B, it just says it, it just says it. Based on the passage, if hypothetical fertility data on two cross-pollinated plants that seem to be of the same species show an 80% reduction in seed production, which choice is a reasonable conclusion? Oh my goodness, okay. This is hypothetical, so they're probably not gonna mention this directly, but they'll do it in some weird back, uh, backdoor way. Um, fertility data, 80% reduction. Okay. Um, it seems like their chronology rule, it seems like it's going to be about this last paragraph. Because closely related species can sometimes mate with one another and produce hybrid offspring, the benchmark for California plants to be regarded as different species is not a full 100% reduction in fertility. Knowing this, Montesinos and his colleagues decided to find out what the fertility might be when you cross different wild star thistle species with one another. They tried to fertilize yellow star thistles with the pollen of sulfur star thistles and also with the pollen of yet another related species. The answer was a 65 to 88% reduction in the number of seeds produced when crosses were made using pollen from different species. So the 80% that they're talking about in the question would fall within these ranges here, and those are different species. This suggests that the California plants at 44% and 52% reduction are probably not yet fully fledged species, but are well on the way towards it um, if they continue to diverge. Okay, yeah, so 80% falls in this range. And therefore, those are different species. They just say that. So these, this hypothetical must involve different species um, that seem to be of the same species. So now, the, 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 my guess is that they would no longer be the same species. Not same species. Look at me dumb summary. Okay, look at my dumb summary. The plants may no longer be, oh yeah. <laughs> plants are probably of the same species but inhabit different local regions. No, it's not about the region. The offspring of the plants will have 100%. Nope, that's so certain. Um, the offspring of the plants are hybrid. No, it's definitely A. This is a good example of like, they're basically just asking you to summarize what you read. So in this, this 80% is telling me, look here, what do we know about this range? Those are different species, therefore, that range probably indicates different species, and like literally that was just the answer. This seems like it's gonna be a confusing question. It ended up not being one because I trusted that just like reading what I'm supposed to read is gonna get me the answer. There's no deeper interpretation. The number that they gave me was in the range that was in the lines, that was it. All right, graph questions. Um, or do we have any, no, we don't have any whole passage questions to do. Which statement is best supported by the data in figure one? So let's go to figure one. Let's see what it says. Seed production in Spanish in California was this thing. Okay. So mean number of seeds, Spanish pollen, California pollen. So they're both highest, right? Where are they highest? 
when the Spanish is with the Spanish and the California is with the California, right? So that's this one and this one, it's when they match. So the highest is when they match, the lowest is when they don't. So let's dumb summarize that. Highest when matched. Spanish pollen produced approximately the same number of seeds in Californian flowers as it did in Spanish flowers. No, because the whole point is that they were different. California pollen produced fewer seeds in both Spanish and California flowers than did Spanish pollen. Okay, I have to go back and check that. Spanish pollen produced more seeds in California flowers than did California pollen. California pollen produced a slightly higher number of seeds. Okay, so this is just, I, I, I miss, I, I, there's more to this question. So let's just look. Um, so is it the same number? Uh, Spanish produced approximately the same number of seeds in California as it did in Spanish. Okay, so Spanish pollen. No, these none of these bars are the same height, so that's just wrong. Uh, B, Californian pollen produced fewer seeds in both Spanish and California flowers than did Spanish pollen. So California pollen is always worse than Spanish pollen. Is that true? California pollen, yeah, that looks kind of true. California pollen, oh, no, 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 no. This is, yeah, this, this, this bar right here, the third bar. Yeah, so that's not true. California pollen. Spanish pollen produced more seeds in California than did California pollen. Okay, so Spanish pollen, Spanish pollen, no. Right, so Spanish pollen in California flowers is not higher than the California pollen. This is an annoying question. Californian pollen produced a slightly higher number of seeds in Spanish flowers than it did in California pollen. So we're looking at the California pollen in the two and it's slightly higher in the left side, okay. California pollen is the, the dark gray. It's slightly higher, yeah, it's very close. You can kind of see it, it's slightly higher. Yeah, so that's the answer. Um, I get why this is a pain. You can kind of even tell on my iPad, on my iPad here, scrolling back and forth, trying to remember what each choice says as I go, because look at, this is intentionally confusing, right? You have Spanish flowers and California flowers. You have Spanish pollen and California pollen. So just keeping track of what you're even asked to do in each choice is really hard. This is a very mean SAT question. They're literally just seeing like, can you pay attention to words? That's all this question is about. Yep. According to figure one, the greatest mean number of seeds per flower was produced with which combination of pollen and flowers? This is a much easier question. It's just asking what's the highest bar? So that, if my memory serves, is Spanish flowers, Spanish flowers with Spanish pollen, right? It's this bar right here. Spanish flowers with Spanish pollen. Spanish pollen and California flowers, no, California, no, here we go. Spanish pollen, Spanish flowers. That is the kind of question that takes two seconds. According to figure two, in which combination was the mean number of seeds per flower lowest for both Spanish and California flowers? So lowest for the two flowers. Okay. Okay. Figure two. Lowest for the two flowers seems to be whatever this bar is right here. That is local cross-species pollen. Okay. Hopefully that's an answer. Um, Spanish pollen... No, um, no, there's this part's right. California pollen, both Spanish, local, cro yeah, this is it. Yeah, local cross species pollen in both of them. Just double check. Yeah, awesome. So look, of the three graph questions, numbers 51 and 52, really easy, really fast. You gotta, if you're running out of time, you gotta jump to these questions. If you skip the number 50, because it's kind of time consuming, I get it. But notice that we didn't need to read anything in the passage. We just mostly needed to be really careful of what we were reading in the choices. So that was really annoying. But um, there's no reading involved in most of these in, in like any sense that we had to deal with these. So uh, let's see. Maybe I made a careless mistake somewhere. But um, yeah, it felt pretty good doing this passage. Well, I got one wrong. And it was the one I expected, 47. I got everything else right. No problems on 42. Even that really annoying graph question I got right. So everything else was fine. It was this one which I expected to get wrong. And it was actually one of the answers that I was pretty sure wasn't right. I, I, I didn't think that the word contextualize was correct. 
But now looking back, I'm like, okay, I can see it, right? So let me show you the line and tell you why contextualizing makes sense here. Um, we The line that they're directing us to, or the, the preceding sentence, is about the, the time span for these thistles to kind of meet each other, right? So the yellow star thistle was first found in 1824, but its journey was indirect via Chile. So the chances are that the Spanish and California yellow star thistles last interbred 350 or so generations ago. Now, to me, not knowing anything about these thistles or breeding or whatever, that sounds like a long time. 350 generations, that's like probably thousands of years, right? Like that seems like a long time. However, then the next sentence, the one we're asked about, is putting it in context. No, actually, this is still exceptionally fast. It's telling us that the time span is, it needs to be interpreted in a different way, right? So our human brain thinks of 350 generations of something as a long, long time. The evolutionary rules, though, tell us that that's actually a short time span in the grand scheme of things. So I get it, it's contextualizing what the time span means and telling us that it's actually a, a fast thing. So I get it. Um, I'm not really mad that I got this question wrong. This is definitely the kind of thing where like, you can do really, really well on the reading. You can um, learn all the strategies and apply them correctly. And at the end of the day, it's a time to test. You only have so long. And some of these answers come down to just in the moment, correctly interpreting one word, correctly finding one word, one idea. And it's usually not the case that it comes down to one thing. Usually main ideas are repeated ideas. You can see them in lots of places. So if you miss it in one spot, you can see it in another. This is why the no reading strategy works is that if you don't have to read a certain thing, it's still okay because the thing that you need, the idea that you need is still somewhere else in a part that you do need to read. However, in this case, um, I just misinterpreted the word and there's nothing I can really do about it. I was reading the right stuff. That wasn't the issue. It was just in the moment, I just, I don't know. I didn't see it the way the SAT wanted me to see it. And that's okay. It just goes to show that there's no, you can't really perfect this. Sometimes when that clock is ticking, you need to make a call and you need to move on. In math and in writing, I am very confident in every one of my answers. It is very rare that I get something wrong. And when I do, it is almost always a careless mistake. Here, if I get something wrong, I'm just like, yep, I missed it. I didn't see it. I thought about it differently. And it happens. And there's something I really could have done differently. If I had more time, maybe I could have rethought about it and looked at it again. But with reading, it's just sometimes you miss the thing you were supposed to see. And that sucks. But it, you can't worry about that. You have to focus on the stuff where the, the, it is predictable and where you can find the right ideas. And so don't waste time trying to find the thing you're going to find on every single question. If you get down to a certain like number of choices or a certain level of confidence, you have to move on. You want to make sure that you get to questions like 51 and 52 before the timer runs out because that's 20 points sitting right there easy points, fast points. Whereas what's number 47? 10, right? It's all about math. Your job, increase the number of right answers, lower the number of wrong. And so if you can't increase the number of right answers easily if you're running out of time, and this is why the no reading strategy works, and this is why I'm not bothered by 47. I just missed the thing I was supposed to see. That's all. And I didn't love my right answer, so I kind of knew I was probably wrong. But in the moment, I didn't have the time to worry about it. And so I had to move on and you have to be comfortable with that too. It is part of the strategy. You just need to accept in the reading section, a lot of the strategies are about increasing your odds of getting it right, placing the best bet. And then sometimes even when you've got the best hand in cards, you, you know, you lose. It happens. It happened here. Not upset about it.